Hello, welcome to another Wind in the Willows video review. This week, Wayfarers Hall. Uh, an absolute classic. This is one of my all time favourites. Um, it's from series one, and the name's familiar uh, because it was uh, also in the book, so it was a chapter uh, straight out of the original book, um, omitted from the film, uh, as is often the case with this chapter. And uh, yeah, written by Rosemary Ann Sisson, and my personal uh, personal favourite of, of her scripts. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, I'm going to press play now. There we go. So, like I say, this one, uh, I grew up with this. Uh, I had a, a video compilation, Children's Favourites, um, from Thames Video. Uh, I don't know if anyone had that video, uh, but it had two episodes of Danger Mouse on it as well, and an episode of Alias the Jester. Um, so, yeah, this one, um, like I say, it's my favourite of Rosemary and Sisson's scripts. I think it's beautifully done. Um, you know, got some very um, nice scenes in it, um, and very interesting differences between this and the book, which we'll get into as we watch. Um, but yeah, that children's favourites video, I think it's just ingrained in my memory because I <laughs> watched it endlessly, that video, over and over again. Um, and I loved, I loved the whole video. But this is the uh, the one that opened the video. And um, yeah, it's just... I mean, even this imagery is, to me is so iconic, um, to me personally. All the uh, illustrations that Beverly Bush did, uh, these... The fruit there and then when the robin shows up just now just that imagery is something about it and with the the butterflies at a moth at the bottom there and the landscape there it's just ingrained there's something about it and it's so nice to finally many years later finally get it on dvd um, rather than watch my very wall out take which i've still got i've got it behind me in the town there so this episode um it's a very, it's quite a serious episode. There's some comedy in it, um, but overall, it's got it's it's a very haunting episode. It's it's about um, this kind of calling that Ratty gets. I mean, Rat, Rat is at the centre of this episode, and, and he's it starts off with him being kind of you know, he doesn't want someone to disappear. Um, it's very unlike the Ratty that we see later in the series, of course. But this, like I say, is straight out of the book, and. He just wants summer to remain. He hates the idea of um, winter coming, you know, colder months. So as he says there, it's still summer. And in essence, it is here in 2019. Um, but it's, it's drawing to a close. I always think of September as kind of the first month of autumn. So um, it felt right to put this episode here. And um, uh, I, what I love, again, with Rosemary Sisson's scripts is that we have the narrator coming in and out. So like here... Um, it's just, it's just nice. It's, again, it's got that storytelling feel to it, and combined with the music, that beautiful music of the main theme, which we hear more of here than we do in, in a lot of other episodes. Uh, and overall, this is pretty true to the chapter in the book. I mean, one, there's one big difference, which we'll get to when we get to it. Um, but um, fa it's fairly close to the to the book. We've got. Otter here, you know, various characters trying to say to Ratty, oh, well, things are changing, you know, we can't, we're too busy, we can't come for a stroll or we can't come for a picnic. Um, look, you've got the swallows there, it's just kind of like, the winter months are coming, you know, and they're getting ready to, to move on their way. And, um, <laughs> I love Portly in this episode. I'm talking about comedy, there is some nice comedy with Portly a little bit later. I love that set as well, look at that. And that backdrop there is a beautiful painting that was done. Um, uh, it's not seen in that many episodes really, but it's wonderful because it just it just expands the landscape. You know, it's just wonderful um, feeling of the world beyond and what there is beyond, which is kind of what this episode is all about. It's, you know, with this whole series, we're in this kind of world with these characters and it's very intimate world, it's very cosy, but what lays beyond, you know, what, what are beyond those hills. And Ratty basically is building towards a strange longing to know. And kind of a weird juxtaposition. On one hand, he's, he's sick of hearing about everyone getting ready for the winter and he wants to just carry on having summer at home. And yet at the same time, he's, he's, 
when you're longing to know what, what lies beyond, which then later leads to in a moment. Um, one thing that struck me with Mole as a ch even as a child is his bag. It always felt a little, dare I say it, feminine. <laughs> If that's a PC thing to say, just because it's floral and it looks, it looks almost like a handbag. Um, but somehow it works with him. <laughs> they obviously did their research and I'm sure gentlemen had bags like that. Um, so here yeah, it's got this mysterious quality here. Where that lunarite is beautifully directed, beautifully shot. And look at that in the, the vast distance there, we've got this, this figure. And this weird sort of pipe music. And we can see that it's another rat. Um, as it is in the, in the, in the book. There's this, it's this seafaring rat. Wayfaring rat. Very mysterious stranger. And I like, I like the, mole, the, the look that Mole gives him here. And the look that he gives back. It's kind of an uncomfortable look. <laughs> Very nicely animated. episode it's got such a lovely feel it just reminds me of summer days and warm warmth and kind of easy going life by the riverbank and yeah. it's weird i can almost i know dramatizing it but it, i can almost remember some of my childhood being like that even though a lot of it wasn't you know obviously it's exaggerated as this is except exaggerating the edwardian times of england but oh, it's this it harnesses those memories and somehow captures those little memories and expands them, if you see what I mean. Uh, but this, this character, I must admit, I had kind of... I was a little bit scared of him as a child. I thought he was a bit creepy. Um, felt slightly on edge with him. And I guess you are supposed to feel a little bit on edge, and it's, it's well designed in that respect. I mean, this, this was directed by Chris Taylor, and just like all the other directors, he had a real eye for detail. Um, I think... You know, having worked with him and interviewed him on this, he, he, was very, um, he was very much enjoying himself working at this stage of the production on the film and then into the third, first series. But he said as the series went on, he got a little bit tired of it. Um, but I think it shows in these early episodes, he's really... Oh, I just love the way it's done, the way it's directed. Well, that's a bit of an odd shot. <laughs> very interesting close-up. Um, and there's a little nod to Venice here. I mean, we, we hear about um, Venice in a later episode, you, you'll try to entertain um, the show they put on. Um, there's a lot of nose movement in fact, in this episode, I must admit. You know, little Alan Key would have got into one of the ears to move the nose. There's a lot of, as a real rat would do, but much more than we see. We very rarely see that movement with that in the episode. And now we're, we're taking into this wonderful song, uh, same title as the episode, Wayfarer is All, available on CD and on iTunes. <laughs> so the complete track. Um, beautiful, haunting song that um, Hopwood and Rowe wrote. And um, it just absolutely captures that kind of, like I say, that haunting quality, this kind of, it's hit, it's hit, it's basically that he's being hypnotised, he's being called away. But who is this character? I mean, he is in the book, he's a very mysterious character. And why does he want Ratty to follow him so badly? Um, he's, just, he's just basically trying to say this is, you know, this is the life for you, you know, you want to travel and experience feasting on ships and things and travelling and going from place to place. And, I did find it, yeah, very, felt slightly on edge watching this as a child, but that's part of the uh, attraction of it. And I always thought that he was voiced uh, by Michael Horden. I always thought, oh, that's Badger I can hear there. My mum did. My mum always was convinced that's Michael Horden. And it wasn't until we actually concentrated on the credits and realised that it's Jack Money. He, he, it's the only voice he did for any Wind in the Willows episode. And he's most famous for Costco Royal Course as Igor in Count Dracula. Um, but of course he did this first. So I guess they, they knew how 
good he was at doing voices and how good an actor he was. He had to cast him as Igor thanks to working with him. This is beautifully shot as well, where the camera moves and dissolves back to Ratty. And notice how the, the camera is always moving as we go back to the wayfaring rat. Um, it's this sense that he's moving, so the camera's moving with him, and I really like that. Rat is static at the moment, and he gets further in the distance. Beautiful. And whoever animated this, I mean, Chris Taylor's team, um, it's his usual team. Um, but it's beautifully done of, of Ratty in the trance. Um, quite difficult to do, you know, when, you, when you're doing a walk cycle, you want to get a bit of a bounce and, you know, get the character across. But in this case, you've got to be removed from the usual character. Ratty is completely in a trance. So you've got to, you've got to minimise the, the action that you do with him. Um, and I love how we cut to the cosiness, the warmth of Mole End. Um, and Mole, the fact he's got a blanket, almost suggests there's kind of cold, cold weather coming. Um, and to be honest, summer at the moment isn't that great. We've had a lot of rain. I'm hoping it's not the true end of the good summer weather. I'm hoping it's going to be a good September. <laughs> so there he is, still in a trance. Lovely movement of um, portly head there, how we carry the cup. Turns round and he's still turning, and it's a very comfortable cup. And they're the kind of cuts you want all the time, you know, you want to guide the audience. Lovely. I like the silence, I like that we've had that mysterious music and now there's just silence. And that is just walking. Music would have killed it, so again, so well directed, so well edited. This is the <laughs> comedy with a point. <laughs> Always used to make my dad laugh at that. Hello, Portland. <laughs> so this is good writing as well. This is good character development of, of Mole. Where would Mole go first, advice? Of course, it would be Badger. Uh, but staying true to the instincts of animals, how they behave. He's um, hibernating already as well. I mean, it's... Kind of the end of summer, late summer, and then he's already hibernating. And you think, well, as, as we thought, well, no, there's plenty of winter episodes where badgers are all about. So, but again, this is a Rosemary and Sisson trip script, and it was slightly outside Brian Schumann's script. Now, here, this is a big difference. Uh, Toad was not involved at all in these events in the book, and the reason for that is because uh, I do forget I, he was either in prison still. <laughs> Or he'd escaped prison and he's on his way home. I always I should have checked the book before I reviewed it. If anyone could correct me and leave it in the comments, then uh, yeah, let me know. <laughs> I'll look it up after I review it. Uh, I always get confused with the order of the chapters and there's the pipe at the gates of dawn at some point as well. Uh, but I think it's a very good move involving Toad in this. Well, firstly, it's good to have him anyway in an episode, uh, but also it gives. Mole a way of getting to Ratty and catching up with him. Plus it shows a really lovely side of Toad which we very rarely see and that's why this episode really stands out for me as a really good Toad episode as well as a really good Ratty episode. Um, so Mole's basically trying to get help from Toad. Um, kind of second best as he was a badger but of course it's the next one to add. <laughs> I love that shot of Toad or a motorbike. There he is in that beautiful, beautiful garden. I don't know if you notice the animation of the windscreen there, just, just moving very realistically in terms of like the car just stopping. Yeah. And I notice more things like that in later years, of course. You don't notice them so much as a child. Um, look how they had the foliage as well, the leaves in the foreground, which was kind of carried over quite nicely from the film, they did a lot of that in the film. Um, there it is again, all those sort of plants and flowers in the foreground. That sign with South on it still exists, would you believe? It's, um, the archives have it. <laughs> uh, I went uh, through the boxes a while back and it moved through and there it was. And I recognised it instantly. Oh. Um, I love this horse. <laughs> 
I think they just caught him on a bad day. <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it's Alfred. He doesn't quite look like Alfred. He's probably at least the same sculpt. <laughs> Good horse yourself. Find out. <laughs> really caught him on a bad day, I love <laughs> I mean, the horses weren't fun to animate, I know that for a fact, but not so bad when you don't have to do a walk so. Look at the light chain, isn't that lovely? So, going to dusk, and now I've got moonlight. Um, lovely with the lights of the car. I've always been intrigued by that shot, you know, I'm trying to work out, you can see the sea moving. And I should have asked Chris last, you know, when I last saw him, um, how was that done? You know, it looked like some sort of material being moved, so beautifully done. And here, i um, uh, got some copies of some drawings that um, Terry Brown did for these. Uh, when he designed the series, and they, they obviously had to build a section of, of this ship. Um, especially for it, you know. And there's a little wind joke, apparently, on the little... Um, Shed that I think you can see there's like a little hut somewhere there. Maybe. So there's the desperation here of like Ratty wants to get away and the others don't particularly mole, he wants to kind of be thinking of what's best for him. And this is why, what I love about Toad here <coughs> the fact that he's saying, Oh, we don't want to lose you, is a lovely side of Toad, showing his loyalty for his friend. What a lovely line it is for Toad to say, we don't want to lose you. Um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's confirming Toad as a, as a solid friend of the Ratties. He's not just you know, another good line, it's for your own good. So it's securing him as kind of this, this deep down he's a very loving, very close character uh, to Ratty. Um, So, and then we have what looked like real tears, they're totally believing. So, again, and it's very unlike Ratty. So in this episode, it's, it's a very extreme versions of the characters, sides to them that we don't see, we never see Ratty cry. And I, don't, I can't think of another episode where we see Ratty cry, we see Mole cry, uh, we certainly see Toad cry, <laughs> Badger cry with laughter. But I don't think... If you, if you can think of one, let me know. I, I don't think there's one where Ratty cries. I could be wrong there. Uh, but certainly not like that, where he, he really wanted, you know, that he was just transfixed. He was to totally kind of hypnotised by this this character. And he's still finding it hard now that he's back home. And again, very true to the book. But Toad's left now, and now it's back to, you know, pretty much as it was in the book. Um, and again, it's showing... I mean, we always know how, what firm friends Ratty and Mole are, but um, it's lovely to see. I mean, it's so equally balanced when you think of the spread of the episodes and, of course, the film. You know, Ratty was always looking out for Mole in the film. Came after him in the Wildwood, helped him. You know, when Mole was missing his home, Ratty realised, oh, I'd be a bit of a pig. Or go on about, is my river and let's find your home, Mole, you know, so... There's this understanding between them, you know, you couldn't get a stronger friendship, could you? Uh, and Mole's totally there for his friend. He felt bad for pulling him away, but he knows it's for his own good, and he knows that's what Ratty wants. Ratty can never leave his riverbank home, and his friends and everything, all, his, all the cares of his life. I love this shot of the pencil, so natural, getting ready to do a bit of poetry. Mole's waiting there and thinking, again, beautifully directed. Talk about carrying the carts where Ratty turns as well. See how that carries the camera around. And we get the smiles at the end with the extreme close-ups. Very subtle. Beautiful, beautiful episode. Um, stunning piece of work, it really is. And it makes me want to delve into the book again, to be honest. Um, there he is, Jack May. Brian Southwood did um, Otter, of course. Andrew Lord and Paul Berry. Oh, I forgot it was Paul Berry on this. Uh, one of his earliest episodes. Um, 
be interesting to know which characters he did. I think he almost certainly would have done Toad. Um, so, yeah. Um, very haunting episode, very deep, very um, on a whole other level, you know, um, similar to like Pipe of the Case of Dawn. Dealing with what I'd call dark issues. Um, but interestingly, there are other episodes in Series 1 not written by Rosemary and Sister that are dark as well. Weasel's Trap springs to mind. Springs to mind, part of the pun, there was a spring trap in there. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, uh, I think it's, it's that first series as a whole is quite, it's full of that balance of darkness and, you know, lightness. And as the series progresses, it gets lighter. Uh, certainly by the time we get to series five. Um, so that that really stands out. I mean, it's probably I could probably say it's my probably my favourite from series one. Right, Definitely one of the favourites. It's right up there. Probably that and the Yuletide Entertainment. Um, yeah, absolutely stunning. So yeah, there we go. Let me let me know your thoughts. Um, it's. I mean, thank God episodes like that exist, you know, I mean, yeah, it, um, I think someone mentioned it's, when we get, got to series five, it became kind of like a sitcom, um, like this kind of comedy series, which I love as well, and at this point, really early on, it's more like a drama, um, with darkness, with a lot of kind of um, dark, mature adult issues uh, going on, um, certainly not a childish issue, that's, I always come back, come back to them. It's what I love about it. It's what really appeals to me. This kind of like this adult quality to it. Um, yeah. So five series, and you have this spread of like yeah, drama to sitcom. What a great series overall. Um, yeah. Anyway, there we have it. Wayfair is all. Would you believe it? There's only one more summer episode, and to be honest, it's not strictly a summer episode. Um, it's kind of an early autumnish episode um, is the Labyrinth. That's the one uh, I'm reviewing next week. Uh, I had to put it next week because uh, there's there's more autumn episodes than any other season. So, uh, and in the narrator doesn't actually mention the time of year. Interestingly, in the opening, but you can kind of tell it's kind of an autumn episode. But I think you can get away with next next week. Think of it as late summer and early autumn. <laughs> And then we go straight into autumn episodes after that. So, um, yeah, join me for that, the final one for, for August. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying these. Uh, I'm hoping to vary them a little bit. They probably seem a bit samey at the moment with the same old background behind me. But um, I did think of varying the background at one point, and then I thought, no, this is fine. Keep the setup as it is. Get through all the episodes. Uh, and then I'm going to continue doing uh, other kinds of videos on a lot of the collection I've got and so on, so yeah, watch this space. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching, uh, really appreciate it, uh, and I will see you next week for The Labyrinth, so please do join me. Uh, enjoy the weather, if it gets better. If it doesn't, try and enjoy it anyway. <laughs> and I shall see you next week. Thanks a lot, and all the best.